discount rates, APRs. If you don't know the difference, you're going to get this wrong. Let me explain to you the difference and how to calculate them. I'm Professor Capco, and I welcome you to my channel. We're going to go over today how to find the discount rate and the APR in a situation such as this one. Here we've got a business that signs a promissory note for $20,000 payable to the bank five months from today. The proceeds from the note were $19,100. So in other words, this is a type of prepaid interest. Instead of tacking on the interest on top of the $20,000 to be repaid in five months, the business will only repay $20,000 and so therefore all the interest has to be front loaded and the proceeds in other words how much the bank actually lends to the business is only nineteen thousand one hundred dollars so they get a check for nineteen thousand one hundred dollars today and then they have to write a check to the bank for twenty thousand dollars five months from today so that is a discount note so let's see how we calculate that so first of all we need to figure out what's the discount rate. Well, to figure the discount rate, what we're talking about is really simple interest. So the simple interest formula is interest is equal to pr the principal times the rate times the time. If you don't remember how to calculate simple interest, I've got a video up here that you can click on and watch how to calculate simple interest. So let's calculate that because that's the discount rate. We're going to first start with the interest. Well, the interest is going to be in dollars. And the amount of interest is the difference between the $20,000 and that is to be repaid and the $19,100 that is the amount that is the proceeds, the amount that is actually received. So if you were to put that in your calculator or you could do it in your head, 20,000 minus 19,100 gives us interest of $900. So we know that the interest, the amount of pay, interest being paid is $900. In other words, the $900 is being tacked on to the $19,100 of the proceeds when the $20,000 is repaid, and that is your interest. The next thing is the principal. Well, the principal, in this case, when we're figuring the discount rate, the discount rate, the principal is going to be the note, the face of the note. So in that case, it is $20,000. You're going to use the amount as principal that is going to be repaid the amount that's going to be repaid. So that's when we're calculating the discount rate. And, you know, people will get excited when they hear discount. They think, hey, I'm getting something on sale. Well, in this case, the discount is the loan that the bank's giving. The bank's getting the discount here because they're only lending out $19,100 and they're getting a $20,000 note uh, being repaid for that. So uh, don't get too excited about that unless you're the bank. So uh, to recap, we've got 19, we have the $900 is the interest that's going to be repaid. The face value of the note, the amount of the loan is $20,000 times the rate. Well, we don't know. That's what we're trying to calculate. Um, this is going to be in a decimal and then we'll convert it to a percentage. And then we're going to be times time. Well, the time for simple interest is going to be in years, but in this case, we don't have a full year. If it was one full year, we'd put a one year. Or if it was three years, we'd put a three here. But we only have five months. So what I recommend in this case is we're going to use a fraction. We have five months out of 12 months. We know 12 months is one year. And five months is the only amount of time that it's outstanding. So our time in this case is five twelfths, five months out of 12. Okay, so now we just go um, through and work on our calculations. This is going to be algebra at this point. We've got an algebra problem. Let's move everything over. You could do it all at once. I'm going to do it in stages. So we have we have some we have a variable here and we have some 
uh, constants here, and on the side we have a constant. We want to move everything over, so we are only left with our variable, which is our rate. In that way, that's going to be the answer to this problem, or at least for the discount rate. These note are all multiplied by each other. The 20,000 is multiplied by the rate times the time. Since they're all multiplied by each other, to get something from this side to that side, we always do the opposite. So to do the opposite, the opposite multiplication is division. So I'm going to start by dividing this side by 20,000. And if I do that, then I need to divide the other side by 20,000. Whatever we do to one side, we're going to do to the other. So the 20,000 over 20,000 just becomes a 1. So on the right side, we're left with 1, and I'm not going to rewrite it. And we have rate times 5 twelfths. On the left side, well, let's use our calculator. We have $900, and I'm going to divide it by 20,000 and see what that gives us. That gives us 0 0.045, and there's nothing but zeros passed here. I do recommend when you're doing these, don't round. Don't round until the very end, because sometimes there's extra digits here that over time and over your calculations may make a difference. Uh, and they, well, let me put it this way, they will make a difference. So don't round until your very, very end. And then it's important to know how many digits you want to round to. Usually the problem will tell us. So now we need to get this out of here. Uh, we want to get the rate by itself. We need to get the 5 twelfths out of here. I could just multiply both sides by the inverse of this, and that would make it simple. Um, but let's just do it a step at a time just to make it simpler. Since we have a 12 in the denominator, I'm going to multiply it by 12 over 1, which is the same thing as 12. I'm multiplying whatever the denominator is, I'm multiplying the right side by, and let's multiply the left side by that. The same thing. Whatever you do to the one side, we've got to do the, to the other. The 12s cancel out. So on the right side, we're left with rate times 5, because the 12 canceled out, it'd be 5 over 1 is what it is. And on this side, I still have the 0 0.045 in here, so I left it there purposely so I can just multiply it by 12. And that gives me 0 0.54, and then there's zeros past that, so I'm just going to leave it as that. But again, don't round, leave it, you know, put all the digits there. Now, since we have multiplication here, r times 5, to get it out of there, the 5 out of there, I'm going to divide by 5. All right, I'm going to get divide this side by 5, and then I'm going to divide the left side by 5, because whatever I do to one side, I'm going to do to the other. The 5s cancel out and become a 1. On the right side, all I'm left with is r. And over here, I've got the 0.54. I'm going to go ahead and divide that by 5, and that gives me... 0 0.108, 0 0.108, and that's my rate. Now, that's my rate in a decimal. We want to convert it to a percentage. So to convert it to a percentage, we just multiply by 100, which is the same thing as moving the decimal place over two places, but I can do it with a calculator. And if you don't remember how to do the conversions from decimal to uh, percentages, I've got a video up here for you uh, for that. So I'm just multiply by 100, which moves the decimal over two places. So my rate in this case is 10.8. That's my discount rate. And we're going to write that with a percentage. So my discount rate is 10.8%. So that's the discount rate. That's the simple interest rate that we're paying. But in this case, we're being asked also, what's the APR? APR stands for annual percentage rate. That's the effective rate, the actual real rate that you're paying. As you may see in um, any kind of loan documents, usually it will tell you the APR. The APR is a more accurate rate. And, uh, and without getting into too much depth, part of the reason why it's going to be different is because we're not actually getting a full $20,000 as our proceeds. We're only getting $19,100. We're prepaying the interest, and that timing is going to impact the interest rate. We expect for the APR to actually be higher than the discount rate. We expect it to be higher because we're paying interest on a smaller amount that was actually the proceeds. So... If we don't get an APR that's higher in this case than the discount rate, then that's an indication that we did something wrong. 
but let's go ahead and calculate the APR now. The formula for an APR is going to be, I'm going to go ahead and put this here, APR. So the APR is equal to the interest paid over the proceeds times time. So the formula is slightly different than we had before. So the APR is the interest paid over the proceeds times time. So APR is what we're calculating. So I'm going to just keep that as APR over here. The interest paid, well, the interest paid is the difference again between the $20,000 that we're paying back and the $19,100 that we received as proceeds. So just like before, we knew that the interest paid was $900. So we're going to put that here in the numerator, $900. The proceeds, this is where it differs. Before we used the principal amount. The principal amount was the amount of the loan, which is 20,000. In this case, we're to use proceeds. The proceeds are 19,100. That's the only amount that was received, the 19,100. You can already see why this is going to change your interest rate because we're not using the full $20,000. And we're going to finally multiply that by time. And again, if it was one year, we'd put a one here. If it was five years, we'd put a five here. But we know that it is not a full year. It's five months. So we're going to use the same five twelfths that we used before. So that's our setup. Now we can go ahead and, and do the algebra. And in this case, it's not really even algebra, it's just some calculations. You can actually put this into the calculator um, as is, but I'm going to do it a step at a time just so you can see how we're doing this. So we have, the, I'm going to clear out my calculator, we have 900, and let's go ahead and multiply this out here. We have the 19,100, 19, and I'm going to multiply it by the numerator. Right, we're multiplying by a fraction, so we don't need a common denominator. So I multiply the 19,000, I'm going to multiply it by the numerator, which is 5, and that gives me 95,500. And I'm going to still divide it by 12. That's still divided by 12, or I can multiply it by 1 12th. It's the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and, since I've got the 95,500, I'm going to go ahead and divide it by 12. And that gives me on for the for the denominator on the numerator stays to be 900 on the denominator we have seven thousand nine hundred and fifty eight dollars point three 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 on and on forever right and this is a case where you know we want to be careful again we don't want to round at this point because it might change the calculation so we have to divide the 900 by this so i could either put 900 and type it back in or here's a little shortcut if you have something along the lines of ba2 plus i can just take this number which is already here and since it's in the denominator i use this button here the one over x and that is the same thing as putting it in the denominator and now that gives me that number by hitting that and I'm going to multiply that by the $900. And that gives me an APR of 0 0.113089. And again, this is in a decimal. We need to change it to a percentage to get a proper APR. So we're going to multiply by 100, which is the same thing as moving a decimal place over. So we have an APR of 11.3 and then for rounding and if you don't remember how to round I've got a video here about rounding um, it's 11.3 and it's a 0 8 and if we're rounding if, to two places the 8 turns the 0 into 1 so 11.31 percent is our APR if you're finding this content helpful please smash the like button and go ahead and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss another video such as this if you if i missed anything put it in the comments and go ahead and um, let me know if there's some additional type problems you want but if we see here the apr is 11.31 and the discount rate was we found to be 10.8 which the apr is higher which is what we expected 
So that's a real good indication that we've got the right amount. Until next time, keep your grade alive and subscribe.